Hey everybody, it's Talara. Welcome back to our Dragon Age Inquisition playthrough. I am chilling here in the main hall of the Skyhold, and as I mentioned in the last episode, I really want to get moving with the main quest, and our next main quest is what Pride had wrought. But before we do that, it has been a minute since we've simply just talked to a lot of our companions, so my plan is to go around and check in with everybody. Um, what I'll do is I'll edit it down, so if they don't have anything to say, you won't see from them. And um, then we can check in together on all of our friends who may have quests for us or some special dialogue. So I'll start making the rounds and I'll keep you guys posted. Inquisitor, I was... Do you have a moment? All right, so the first person I checked in with, with was Solus, and lo and behold, he's got a cutscene for us. Let's like see what he has to say. Before the anchor. Has it affected you? Changed you in any way? Your mind? Your morals? Your... Spirit? No, not really. I don't believe so. Ah. Why do you ask? You show a wisdom I have not seen since... Since my deepest journeys into the ancient memories of the Fade. You are not what I expected. Oh, thank you. Um, what did you expect? What have I done that's so surprising? Kunari are savage creatures. Their ferocity held in check only by the rigid teachings of the Kune. But you have shown a subtlety in your actions. A wisdom that goes against everything I know of your people. I, I try. I do what I can. You are modest. So many would use this Inquisition as a blunt instrument in their rise to power. But not you. So what does this mean, Solas? It means that I respect you deeply, Inquisitor. And I have disturbed you enough for one evening. Well then, that was an interesting conversation. Um, it's very nice to hear that I'm respected by Solus. Um, a little strange at the same time. At the very least, we got an excuse to come out to my balcony and take a look around at the beautiful view. Um, Alright, so that's one companion checked in with. Let's see who else we got to chat with. I expected ruins. They were. As you see, the Inquisition has not been idle. Would it be possible to meet the Herald before we return to Ghislaine? My dear Laurent, for you, anything. Allow me to present Inquisitor Adar. Your worship, you do us great honor. Inquisitor, this is my dear Bastien's sister, Grand Cleric Marceline, and his son, Duke Laurent of the Council of Heralds. Madame de Fer has told us what great trials you faced, trying to save my poor brother's life. The Maker called my father to his side. It was valiant of you to champion him in his final hours. So as you guys can probably see, I spoke to Vivienne, and here she is with her uh, late lover's family. Um, I'll just be polite and say I wish I'd done more. If only I'd been able to save Bastien. The Circle of Magi told Bastien many years ago that his illness was incurable. It was simply his time. Would you mind waiting for me in the chapel, my dears? The Inquisitor and I have business to discuss. It has been our very great pleasure, Harold. So you've met the family now, and made a good impression in spite of yourself. Well done. Uh, what was that all about? I don't understand. What just happened here? A victory. My victory. Properly worded, the righteous cause of the Inquisition can be used to great effect with my Bastien's deeply pious relations. With Bastien's loss, I have connections to the Council of Heralds and the highest levels of the Chantry. All thanks to you. <laughs> you always get what you want. You always get what you want, don't you? No matter who you have to step over. Of course I do, Inquisitor. I play the game to win. Well, I can't keep Marceline and Laurent waiting. Thank you so much for your cooperation, Inquisitor. 
I could never have done this without your help. I didn't mean for that dialogue option to come off so snarky. I thought I would play it a little bit more cool. Um, but good old Vivienne, never, never slowing down. Even though her, her love is dead, she is on to the next one, trying to find every opportunity that she can from the situation. So, you know, in a way, you have to respect her for doing that. Uh, but in another way, it can definitely come off a little cold-hearted. Regardless, uh, happy she's happy. And, uh, I'm really glad I took the opportunity to speak with my companions, because so far, literally everybody has wanted to speak with me, so... Let's see, Dorian, are you gonna keep up the trend? Questions, questions. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I should go. Here I thought we were just getting to the good part. Inquisitor! Come, have a drink. To killing a high dragon like warriors of legend. <laughs> what is this? What exactly am I supposed to be drinking? Maras, look. What does that mean? It means drink. <laughs> Fine, drink to slaying a high dragon or three. <laughs> I know, right? Put some chest on your chest. Mm, that little gurgle right before it spat fire. And that roar. What I wouldn't give to roar like that. The way the ground shook when it landed. The smell of the fires burning. Toss it a thon halsam. You know, Kunari hold dragons sacred. Well... As much as we hold anything sacred. <laughs> Here, your turn. What was that Kunari phrase you just said? That thing you just said. You shouted it during the fight, too. What does it mean? Oh, Tarsadathan Halsam. Closest translation would be, I will bring myself sexual pleasure later, while thinking about this with great respect. Oh, wow. You shouted that while it was breathing fire at us. I know, right? <laughs> Bull is hilarious. I was really hoping we'd have some dialogue with Bull here. I was not expecting us to be drinking to the slaying of all the high dragons, but honestly, this is perfect timing. After, uh, in our last episode, we literally went on a dragon hunt. So, I'll drink to that. Yes, the second cup's easier. Most of the nerves in your throat are dead after the first one. <laughs> Atashi, the glorious ones. That's our word for them. Atashi. So why are dragons sacred to Kunari? I'm a Kunari, but I don't know that, so you can tell me. Why do you think the Kunari think of dragons that way? Well, you know how we have horns. We kind of look more... Dragony than most people. Maybe it's that. There you go. But a few of the Ben Hasrath have this crazy old theory. See, <clears throat> the Tamasrans control who we mate with. They breed us for jobs like you'd breed dogs or horses. What if they mixed in some dragon a long time ago? Maybe drinking the blood, maybe magic, I don't know. But something in that dragon we killed. Spoke to me. I think that's pretty cool, uh, to think that the Kunari are somehow maybe even just slightly related to dragons. At the very least, like he said, they have the horned connection. Um, I'm sorry we had to kill it. It's a shame we had to kill the dragon. Damn good fight. Dragons are the embodiment of raw power. But it's all uncontrolled. Savage. So, they need to be destroyed. Taming the wild. Order out of chaos. <laughs> Have another drink. I think he's probably going to kill me with these drinks, but all right. <laughs> nice. To dragons. <laughs> Mm. 
To you. To the Iron Bull. And his ass-kicking Inquisitor. Hey, hey, Kadan, listen. I always want to say this, and I never can when we're off saving the world. You've got fantastic tits. Wow. <laughs> Bull, stop. You're going to get so romantic, I'm going to blush. <laughs> Well, that was a very timely conversation, what with the dragon hunting, and it ended with some classic bull charm. I want to see if he does have any more dialogue in sort of a romantic sense. We haven't really checked in with each other in a while. What can I do for you? Um, do you have anything to say about like us? To talk about you and me. Sure, boss. What's up? Um, are we serious? So what is this? What are we doing? That's up to you, boss. If you wanted light and casual, that's fine with me. How does it work for Kunari? How do Kunari show that they're serious about a relationship? They don't. We don't have sex for love. But for someone we really care about, there is an old tradition. You find a dragon's tooth, break it in half, and you each wear a piece. Then, no matter how far apart life takes you, you're always together. Well, that's the cutest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, okay, I'm gonna go... See you later, Bull. Do nice something you, maybe involving a uh, dragon tooth. <laughs> I'm ready for this to be serious, Bull. You're crass, but I love it. I'm gonna go fulfill this Kunari Yo, ritual. Alright, I'm at the requisition table, and here it is the Necklace of the Caden. Traft a necklace from a dragon's tooth split in two. You can give to you prove your commitment to the Iron Bull. Luckily, we slayed a dragon together. I mean, we drank to it. We can use that very dragon that we slayed together to make this necklace, which is kind of romantic, don't you think? Alright, I'm all in, guys. Me and Bull, forever and ever. Time to go give him this necklace. Hey. Give Bull his gift. I have something for you. Really? Well, I think I've got something for you, too. Come on. I'll go first. There we go. No Inquisition. No war. Nothing outside this room. Just you and me. So, what'd you want to talk about? Sorry to disturb your rest, Inquisitor. But our forty of Oh my god, Bull. Maker. Oh, how's it going? <laughs> Oh my god, they're all gonna walk in. With Bull in the nude. Oh dear. I I'm so sorry. I cannot move my legs. Is something the matter? Oh, <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. Do you see this? No. So, I take it... Actually, she's the one who's been taking it. Wow. I apologize for interrupting what I assume was a momentary diversion. Uh, nothing wrong with having a bit of fun. Who wouldn't be a little curious? This is hilarious. Oh my god, I cannot believe all three of them walked in. Uh, it's a little more than a fling. Bull and I are together. This was more than just a momentary diversion, and Bull and I intend to continue. Is that a problem? No. Not at all. A surprise, I'll admit. But not a problem. So glad I have everyone's we'll blessing. <laughs> yes. Do enjoy yourselves. Bye. You okay, boss? Better than them. I believe we may have blinded poor Cullen. But since we have a moment. What's that? The dragon's tooth. Split in two. So no matter how far apart life takes us, we're always together. Aww. Not often people surprise me, Kadan. Kadan? Kadan. My heart. Oh. Kadan. Yay! Me and Bull are officially together. Also, love how we didn't go up to my room. We went in this random broken room with this bed. <laughs> 
But that was very nice and sweet. Okay, we need to go talk to Bull one more time. As hilarious as it was getting walked in on multiple times, it was a very sweet moment at the end, and I'm so glad me and Bull have made it official. We took our own time with things, which is kind of nice sometimes. How you doing, Kadan? And now here we are. I'd like to talk about you and me. Sure, boss. What's up? Can I kiss you? Do you have some free time? For you. Always. <laughs> I forgot what kissing meant when it comes to ball. <laughs> there we go. Now we got a kiss in. Yay! Oh, well that's lovely. I'm so glad. Not only did we get to toast to our slaying of dragons, but we used the slaying of dragons to really come together, so... That's... as crude as it was, it was romantic in its own way as well. Anything you want to say, Cassandra, or we're going to pretend that just never happened? Good book? Ah! I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, what are you hiding? No. What are you hiding, exactly? I'm not hiding anything. Exactly. I think you are. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords <laughs> and Shields. The latest chapter. Reading Varric's books. So you've read them all? The latest chapter. Meaning, you've read them all? Not since this all began. We've been busy. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tavinta. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my god, she's secretly reading Varric's smutty bottle- smutty novels. <laughs> uh, I won't tell him. Me? No, I would never. They're terrible. And magnificent. <laughs> and this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. You! You could ask him to finish it. Command him to... Pretend you don't know this about me. Wow, we are getting so many good cutscenes today. I cannot believe Cassandra's guilty pleasure is reading Varric's novels. We're gonna go talk to him now and see if we can, as she put it, command him to write the next chapter. Hey, uh, Varric, hypothetical question. If you've got questions, I'm your dwarf. Um... Cassandra wants a book. Cassandra is waiting for the next issue of Swords and Shields. I must have heard that wrong. It sounded like you just said that Cassandra read my books. She's a big fan. She's a pretty big fan, in fact. Are we talking about the same Cassandra? Tall, grumpy seeker, like stabbing things? Wait, did you say the romance serial? Oh, she'll be waiting for a while then. I haven't finished it and wasn't planning to. That book is easily the worst I've ever written. The last issue barely sold enough to pay for the ink. Cassandra seems to like it. Well, Cassandra seems to be hooked on it. And I honestly thought a hole in the sky was the weirdest thing that could happen. <laughs> so, you want me to finish writing the latest issue of my worst serial for Cassandra? Oh, that's such a terrible idea. I have to do it. On one condition, I get to be there when you give her the book. Deal. You've got a deal. I'll get to work then. You know, the fact that the book is terrible just makes it more worthwhile somehow. Amazing. Okay, so it says give Cassandra the latest chapter of Swords and Shields. That makes me think that it must be done. Varric just wrote it at supersonic speeds. I love how Cassandra's like, don't tell Varric. And I was like, I won't. And then immediately told Varric. But I mean, she did tell me to get him to write the next chapter. So you got to make some concessions, right? 
Sandra, I've got a present for you. What have you done now? I get it, Seeker. You're still sore after our spat. I'm not a child, Varric. Do not suggest I'm without reason. Uh, a peace offering. The next chapter of Swords and Shields. I hear you're a fan. This is your doing. None other. Oh, yes. Do you really think I'd miss this? Well, if you're not interested, <laughs> you're not interested. Still needs editing anyhow. Wait! <laughs> <laughs> you're probably wondering what happens to the night captain after the last chapter. <gasps> Nothing should happen to her. She was falsely accused. Well, it turns out the guardsman... Don't tell me! <clears throat> this is the part where you thank the Inquisitor. I don't normally give sneak peeks, after all. I... Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. This was everything I'd hoped. I know how you feel. I wonder if I have time to read the first part. But don't forget to tell all your friends, if you have any. <sighs> Completely worth it. Yep. Completely worth it sums up how I'm feeling right now too, Varric. That was awesome. What a silly little side quest. Uh, that was great. And hey, now Cassandra gets to read the next chapter of the book and clear up that cliffhanger. And we are gonna head upstairs and check in with our last few companions. First up is Sarah. You have a problem. That over there is a full tavern, but everyone's drinking alone. They're all up their own asses about the Inquisition. I can't have fun with everybody whinging, and they'll fall on their swords before Corifinus can push them. I'm thinking pranks. Set a few up, knock a few down. You in or not? Uh, how will that help? I don't understand how annoying my people will help. Look, you have experts for everything, and I know a bunch of tight-ass people when I see them. Oh, sure, they'll complain, but they'll really mean... Thank you for distracting me from the end of the stupid world. Come on! I mean, we've had lots of fun today in many different ways. We may as well just keep it going, right? Sure. Sign me up. Lead the way. What, really? Really. <laughs> I knew you were different. Let's go. Okay. Right, General Uptight is gone. Have a search about. <laughs> Find something to mess with and give your soldiers a laugh. So here we are in Colin's office. It's on his desk. desk. Oh yes, center of the empire and all that. What to do? What to do? Great. So what do we do? All right, Sarah. What do you want to do? Thing looks heavy. Don't want to move or break it. I got it. Easy one. Just a slip of something under here. There. Won't notice much, but it's just that little bit wonky. He's so in control that'll piss him royally. I tell one of the soldiers and boom, the general seems like people. And since he works for you, you seem like people. Come on, next one. All right, that was a harmless little prank, giving Colin a wobbly desk. Right. Next up. Little lady prissy pants. Have a look for something she likes too much. Next up is uh, Josephine, as you can see. Little lady prissy pants, if you will. What does she like too much? The door? Just the door, where she greets every important idiot. Yes. All right, what do we do? Well, Sarah, what do you have in mind? Um, <laughs> get a bucket. Classic, yeah? Five minutes of sloppy boss gets you weeks of happy kitchen staff. Except for the one who cleans it up, I suppose. But whatever, next stop. All right, this one's going to be a little bit more ruthless. I think Josephine's going to get a bit of a dunk. Next up is Liliana, by the looks of it. I feel like Liliana would enjoy a good prank. It's got to be a good one, though. What's that? A locked... No, leave that. 
Not interested in her hidden things. Not for just a bit of fun. Maybe feed her messenger something gassy? No, bears don't part. But they flap and... Uh... Hmm. Who is up there? Uh, I mean, it's my town. I'm allowed to be up here. It's the Inquisitor and Sarah. Nothing to worry about, Solus. It's just me and Sarah. Well, all right then. Ah, oh, what fun is that? Let's go. I thought I was clearing our names, but anyway, I guess Liliana's not getting pranked. That was fun. An Inquisitor of the people. Still remembering you're one of them. If all they got was the Herald stuff, the serious bit, you'd start to sound pretty scary. That works, but not for long. Fair enough. I guess, yeah. It helps to keep us inspired. Whatever it takes. I'd start throwing pies if it kept people inspired. Pies is so good! And Corypheness would never do that. Good thing for you, innit? Because from the bottom, everyone up top sort of seems the same. Anyway, fun time, Inquisitor. You! Ulfric! Oh, uh oh You did it! <laughs> <laughs> That was that was silly fun. Like she said, every now and then you do have to kind of let loose or things kind of become all doom and gloom around here and doing silly little pranks, as long as they don't harm anybody, can help make a sense of connection between the people, so that was fun. And now let's see what Cole wants to do. She's still behind the curtains in the reading room, watching the blood pool on the floor. Oh, that's uh less fun. I'll talk to you later. If you like. Hey, I'm gonna <laughs> leave Cole to his uh, musings, and we have... I was gonna say one more person to check in with, but actually two. Colin and Blackwall. Let's head over to Colin's first, who should be just over here. I wanted to thank you. When you came to see me, if there's anything... This sounded much better in my head. You're feeling better? I trust you're feeling better? I... yes. Is it always that bad? The pain comes and goes. Sometimes I feel as if I'm back there. I should not have pushed myself so far that day. Just be careful. Just try to be more careful from now on. Of course. I've never told anyone what truly happened to me at Ferelden's Circle. I was not myself after that. I was angry. For years, that anger blinded me. I'm not proud of the man that made me. Now I can put some distance between myself and everything that happened. It's a start. It's good to let go. The past isn't always pleasant. Sometimes you have to let go and move on. I can't forget what happened, but it led me here. I can make that mean something. Anyway, I meant to thank you, not trouble you further. You've enough to worry about. How are you holding up? My friends keep me grounded. I've met good people here. Knowing they have my back, it helps. You certainly keep interesting company. I suppose I do as well. Well, that was a nice check-in. I'm happy to hear that Colin is doing better. Um, if you guys remember, he's been trying to quit Lyrium and going through some pretty serious withdrawals as a result. But uh, talking to him then made him definitely seem like he was doing better. That's good. Now the last person I want to check in with is Blackwall. We'll see if he has anything to Thank say. You. The war in Ole has claimed too many lives. It's over for good. Same. All right, nothing else to say though, nothing so right we'll now. talk later. Perhaps in a bit. All right, so that's everybody checked in with. The only the, or the last thing that I want to do before we head forward to confront Corypheus is, if you remember, we're actually in the middle of completing a quest for Josephine. Um, she has some assassins after her. 
And the way she's going about dealing with that is she wants to elevate someone of an old house back to their old status so that they can cancel the contract because it's like a decades old contract. It's a very Josephine way of going about things. Um, and it's taken many steps. Yeah, so it says here, Josephine attempted to reinstate her family as a trading power in Orlais, which triggered an assassination contract taken out more than 100 years ago by a family known as the Du Parquets. Despite the contract's age and the fact that the Du, du Parquets are no longer nobility, the contract is still binding. A group of assassins honoring the contract, called the House of Repose, won't rest until Josephine is dead. So the next thing we need to do is arrange a favor for Judge Ald at the war table. So let's go do that next, sort of, so we can come full circle with helping out all of our companions before we head outside of our inner circle. Alright, so here's the quest. Getting a judge's favor. Inquisitor, we must have an Orlesian judge sign papers formally requesting we elevate the Du Parquets into nobility. I've approached Judge Ald, who's requested a party of Inquisition soldiers meet him in the Frostbacks for a hunting expedition. Some sort of rare spider, as big as a horse, the judge was telling me, lives inside the caves a few days west of Skyhold. He would like an honor guard who knows the mountains to show him the way. Send some scouts and officers to accompany him, and Judge Ald will happily sign the paperwork we require. Okay. Josephine says the commander has kindly found some soldiers he can spare to accompany Judge Ald's hunting party. Inquisitor. Well, happy to help, Josephine. So, um, by the time we get started on the next episode, that mission should be complete. So, we'll call it a day here. I hope you all enjoyed this uh, rather light-hearted episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. It was really fun just chatting with all of my companions, touching base with everyone. And uh, when we get back next time, hopefully we'll finish up Josephine's companion quest and then get started on our next main quest.